Hello guys, welcome to a new video and in this new video we are going to configure um, 802.1 export based authentication and we are going to do a lab from IT Pro TV and if you do not have IT Pro TV um, it is a really good website where they have a lot of videos on certifications like VMware, Cisco, Azure, um, a lot of Linux, um, ethical hacking, a lot of CCNA routing and switching, CCMP, um, CCNA security, which is the one that I'm taking right now, and they also have tests that you can take there, and also they have labs, and I'm going to do one of those labs, which is the one for the CCNA security exam. And if you go to that website and you sign up and you use promo code Asker Ogando 2 you can get 30% of your IT Pro TV account. Like I said, if you use promo code Asker Ogando 2 from IT Pro TV, IT Pro TV, you can get 30% um, off of your um, purchase, and also you get a seven-day trial before you do anything else. So it is free, guys. If it is free, go ahead and try, and then get 30% off with Asker Ogando 2. Okay, so let's start with this practice lab. I have never done this practice lab here, so it first gives you a base. Um, explanation of what 802.1x port security based authentication is. So port based authentication provides a security mechanism to allow or disallow connectivity to a device connected to a specific port. The device attempting to connect to such a port is called the supplicant. The supplicant can be an end user device such, a, such as a computer or an IP phone or it can be another network device. In this exercise um, you will enable and configure port-based authentication on the NYH1, which is this one, which I have it on already, router, and you will then configure NY Core 1 switch, which I have it on already, to authenticate as a supplicant on the specific port on the router. Before you begin, make sure that lab CSC 001 server is on. So let's see, we have to turn this one on. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And these ones are um, actually um, Cisco routers and switches um, that are live on this from this practicelabs.com. And you get access with your IT Pro TV account that you can get. Um, and I can show you how you can get those uh, whenever you go to. If you go either to the courses, to one of the courses, um, the one that I'm taking, CCNA Security, um, if you go into, you see that they have practice tests and they also have virtual labs. If you go into virtual labs, you're going to see that they have 17 labs right here. And the one that I'm using is this one right here. So if you click on this one, it's going to take you into this practice lab right here. So right now, we are just waiting on this server to turn on and the step one that we need to configure uh, in this first step you will configure that you have connectivity between N NYH1 router and this PLAB server which is this one by pinging IP address of the server which is 192.168.16.10 and then after that uh, we are going to um, connect to the NYH1 console and enter the following command. So we need to ping from NYH1. We need to ping um, the server, which is this one right here, the PLAB. We need to ping that right now. But let's see if it is on. It is still it is establishing a connection. You can see now it is on. Now let's go ahead and do NYH1, which is the first step. And we need to ping to see if we have connectivity to the server. Oops, let's go ahead and enable. Um, let's go ahead and ping from here 192.168.16.10. So you can see we have connectivity. So that was the first step. Um, by successfully pinging the server, you have configured that connection between the NYH1 router and NY Core 1 switch. Um, it's functioning since the ping will have to traverse this link to be successful. Um, and if you want to take a look a 
at the diagram, you can see that NYH1 is right here. The NY core one is right here. And also the P-lapse is all the way down here. So this is all working right now. Okay, so if we click on next, and we are going into um, next uh, step number two. So next, in order to enable 802.1x authentication on NYH1 router, it is necessary to enable the AAA authentication um, authorization and accounting on the router. To do this, um, enter the following commands. So we need to first enable CISP and also then the AAA model. So let's go ahead and do that. Config T, CISP, enable. And then we are going to enable AAA new model. And as you can see, the the CISP enable command enable, enables uh, the client information signaling protocol on the router. Um, CISP will also enable on the supplicant switch. This feature is primarily required when attempting when employing 802.1x supplicant functionality to a switch port, as you will do in this exercise. Um, CIS, CISP was developed specifically to enable device-to-device -device communication. So now let's go to step three. Um, you will define the method of authentication that you want to enable, namely 802.1x using the following commands. So let's go ahead and do that. Triple eight authentication, um, and then we're going to do that one x, and then we're just going to leave it as default, and we're going to use the local account to authenticate. After we do that, we need to go into that one x system authentication control and press enter. And the really good part that I like to is that every command it gives you what every command does so the first one that we did which is this triple a authentication that one x default local he says that indicates that local credentials will be used like i said and then no we missed one so we need to configure that this username as well so let's go ahead and do username cisco password cisco and this one this command over here, the last one that we just entered, configures the username and password in the local database that we will be used for authentication right here. Um, and this one um, globally enables 802.1x port based authentication. Now let's go ahead into step four. Authentication has been enabled on the router. Now authentication must be applied to the specific port in question. Looking at the lab diagram, you can see that the NY Core 1 switch is connected on the Gigabit 00 port of the NYH1 router. Enter the appropriate configuration mode to configure this interface. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and into interface Gigabit 00. And then we are going to do an authentication. We're going to do port control. We do, we're going to say auto. And then we're going to do that one X PE. PAE authenticator. Let me see that one X and then authenticator. And then we're going to exit. So we have configured this interface um, to do uh, that one X authenticator or authentication. Um, the next step is you need to verify the configuration by typing the command show that one x all so let's go ahead and exit show that one x all and from here you can see that we are using the authenticator the port control is auto control direction is both host mode is single host quiet period server timeout and timeouts and all that good stuff is in there We can skip all that stuff. You can read it if you wanted to. So now task number two, we need to configure the switch as an 802.1x supplicant. So we have moved to task two. We already comp com um, completed task one, which was on the router. Now we need to go ahead and go into NY Core 1, which is the switch. 
And from here, we need to enable that one X port based authentication on NY Core 1 switch by using by issuing the following commands. Notice that these commands are similar to those used to configure NYH1 router. So let's go ahead and do that. Enable config T. We are going to enable CISP and then triple A new model. And then after that, we need to go ahead and configure the dot one X credentials. And the credentials that we're going to be using are is going to be the NYH1 underscore PAE profile and it needs to match. If it doesn't match, um, it's not going to work. So we're going to do the username that we're going to be using is going to be Cisco and the password is Cisco. And this is to authenticate. Remember that we created this um, local account over here. So we are just adding this local account over here. So we are able to authenticate from the switch to the router. So after that, we're just going to do exit and then exit. So after we do that, um, we got to go into step number three and we'll need to go ahead and go into the NY Core 1, which is the one that we are right now, into the configuration mode. And we need to do this, that one, that one, X supplicant force multicast. So that one X supplicant force multicast, enter. And this command is, ne is necessary to allow for a switch to function as a duplicate. Okay, now let's go ahead and move on to step number four. So now what we want to do is we want to enable debugging of 802.1x messages in order to observe the process of authentication. In order to do this, input the following command. So let's go ahead and do this debug command dot 1x o. So you can see that all that one X debugging is on right now. Now let's go ahead into step number five. Next, we'll enable port based authentication on the interface of the NY Core 1 switch that connects to the NY H1 router. Looking at the network diagram, you can see that this is the interface 1 slash 0 slash 1 interface. So let's go ahead into that interface. Interface fast Ethernet one slash zero slash one, and the commands that we need to do is going to be the switch port trunk encapsulation that one Q. So let's go ahead and do that switch port trunk encapsulation that one Q, and then switch port mode trunk, and then that one X. PAE supplicant. And there we go. It is it has told me that or has it told me that it was created. As you can see right here, created supplicant sub block. So now the above commands configure the following. So the first one that we did was a switch port trunk encapsulation that one Q. This configures the port to use that. 802.1Q trunk and encapsulation, and then the trunk mode, you should know this by now, it how wires the port to function only has a trunk port. Dynamic trunk configuration is disabled when you do that. And the dot one x PAE supplicant enables the dot one x functionality on the port and indicates that this port will function as a supplicant. And also, uh, notice the debugging message message once the interface has been configured as a that one X supplicant. Okay, then we are going to go into step number six. And we next we will associate the credentials profile name, this profile that we created. Uh, we created that profile over here. Um, earlier with the in, with the interface in question, 
To do this, enter the following command. Once entered, you will see, you should see similar debug commands on the console. So we are still gonna stay in that interface and we do that one X credentials and we're going to use the NYH one underscore P A E profile credentials. And as you can see, since we enable the debug messages, we can see that we get those debug messages over here directly into the console. Okay, that is great. So now let's go ahead and into step number seven. So now um, you will attempt to ping P the this server right here. Um, server once again with a total of 100 packets using the following commands. So we had to do a ping 192.168.16.10 that that and repeat it 100 times. And we have to do this from the NYH1, which is this one right here. Let's go ahead and do a ping 192.168. That 168, that 16, that 10, and we're going to repeat this a hundred times. There it is. We sent a hundred ping messages, and you can see that we were able to successfully do that. Um, so during this procedure, procedure, you may see some syslog messages indicating that gigabit um, interface zero slash zero went down and came back up once or two intervals of the 30 seconds for the exchanging of 802.1x packets elapsed, the switch should authenticate and the ping should be successful. We did not get that, that was successful right away. So that is good. So next, turn off all possible debugging on NY Core 1. So let's go ahead to NY Core 1, end it, and you can do on all. So all possible debugging has been turned off, so that's good. So now it's, it's telling me you have successfully completed this lab. And if you want to go to the end, you can see a gives you a summary, which is kind of cool. In this module, you achieve the following activities. Enable and configure 802.1x port base authentication on a port on the NYH1 router, which is this one. You configure the and white core one switch to act as an 802.1x port based authentication supplicant. And then you will serve the packets that were sent from the supplicant for the purpose of 802.1x authentication. So we have completed this lab, guys. And thank you guys for watching this video. And like I said before, if you don't have um, IT Pro TV, which is the um, website that I use for all my Cisco certifications. Um, for the I use it for the ICND one and also for the ICND two, and then I got I achieved my um, CCNA routing and switching using this website and their practice lab and also their practice test. And if you want to um, go ahead and create an account with them, you can go ahead into IT Pro that TV website, and whenever you go ahead, you can go ahead and trial. You can try it for free. And then you can also use my promo code, which is Ascarogando2, and you can get 30% off of your purchase from IT Pro TV. Also, if you have a Twitter account, um, go ahead to Twitter and follow me on Twitter at CCNA Deletives, where I post all my videos, configuration, um, I post questions, a lot of stuff, guys. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter. And if you don't have a Twitter account, hey, go ahead and create a Twitter account and then follow me on Twitter. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.